لله حمدا يوافي نعمة ويكافي مزيدا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نفسي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله وخليله وصديه وخير نبي أرسله أرسله الله إلى العالم كله بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله وسراجا منيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He seek his forgiveness, his guidance, and his assistance. And we take refuge with him from the evil within our souls and from the consequence of our misdeeds. Whoever Allah gives guidance to, none can mislead, and whoever he misleads, none can guide. I testify there's nothing and no one worthy of worship besides Allah alone. He has no partners, and I testify that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is his servant and messenger. To ask Allah to grant him peace and to extend to him our salutations on this special day. Just as we ask him to grant peace to his family members, to all of his companions, and everyone who follows in goodness and so shows goodwill until the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. January 15th today is the birthday of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we know in America what he's most famous for is his I Have a Dream speech wherein he mentioned that that he wished that a day would he would see or he saw a day where his children would not be judged by the color of their skin but by, but by the content of their character. A very Islamic statement, a very Islamic teaching to judge people by the content of their character. Or as the Prophet said to his companions and to us, of course, by extension, in the Laha la yunguru ila suwarikum, walakin yunguru ila kurubikum. And there are many different narrations of hadith, but fundamentally, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at your outward forms. Just look at your bodies, look at your color. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your hearts. And in one narration, or sometimes it's narrated, they said, Wa amarikum and your deeds. More importantly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He looks at your hearts. Which is really a beautiful thing when we think about it, that many times in this world and in our lives, we do things that we don't intentionally, intentionally mean to do. And Allah knows that we did not mean to do those things. And although while the outsiders, they see us one way and they may label us and condemn us and perhaps even damn us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks within the human heart and he understands that sometimes we will have those oversights. Sometimes we will make mistakes, etc., etc. Brothers and sisters, we live in a very tumultuous time and there are are many fault lines that we find ourselves standing upon. Of course, one fault line which has always been around, probably will never go around, relates to the fault line of class, of social class, the rich and the poor. There's a racial fault line. There's a gender fault line. And then even today, people talk about the sexual orientation thought line. And even beyond that, those who speak about what can be called the, the thought line of reality. And that there are people who want to redefine the human being and to convince us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create a male and a female. And they believe that you can 
be assigned to whatever category on the basis of your own preferences. If you feel that way, you want to feel that way, you think you feel that way, then that's what I am. If you think you're a man, then you're, if you're a woman and you think you're a man, then you should be referred to as a man and vice versa. Many, many fault lines. The important question for us as Muslims is that what is our role? Or what should be our role and in trying to navigate these difficult conversations? Political conversations, because that's another fault line, the political, the political fault line, which has become perhaps the most important of all of them today. Because everything else that I listed falls under that now. Democrat, Republican, etc., etc. But the word Muslim means one who submits. And of course we know it means to, first and foremost, to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But another meaning of Muslim, meaning of Muslim is peacemaker. One who makes peace. And it's precisely because of the balance that a believer a true follower of the Messenger والسلام, is characterized by in the Quran in more than one place because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects, expects from us to be witnesses over humanity, to be those who perhaps even stand judge over humanity. Why? Because of our balance, because of our love of truth, because we don't simply take sides based upon partisan uh, attitudes and spirits. We don't take sides based upon tribal affiliation. That we side with the truth and we're patient with one another in the pursuit of truth. But truth is one and the darkness is many as we know. What is the role of the Muslim in all of this? And I would say that it, the role of the Muslim is for us to not, to, to not succumb to what the majority of people have succumbed to. It's to malign one political faction as opposed to another. Or one particular race as opposed to another. As one particular gender or sex as opposed to another. That Muslims should be the individuals who speak frankly and with reason. We are the ones who inject reason into the conversation. Because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we love his messenger alayhi salatu wa and we follow him as a sign of our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Quran says, If you truly love Allah, then follow me. He will love you and forgive you for your sins. This is what Allah told the Messenger alayhi salatu salam to, take, to say to a Sahaba and by extension to say to us as well. If you truly love Allah and His Messenger, then you are to follow them. But the Messenger maligned an entire race of people. Especially because we feel vindicated somehow. That is really interesting that Muslims today, many Muslims, especially those who are involved in politics, which becomes a lot of us nowadays, that it becomes so easy for us to turn and do to others what they did to us. When we say those conservatives, those Republicans, they attacked us, they called us terrorists. Or even more than that, those white people, they called us terrorists and they they, and they projected this imagery of terrorism about us in the news for years. So now, it's time for sweet revenge. So we love the fact that we see them being alive. And we say, hey, what comes around goes around. And we jump on the bandwagon. And we do the same as they do. Sweet revenge. But when we read the seerah of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet sallallahu one of his most outstanding characteristics was that he never took vengeance because of an attack on his person or on his character. The only time that he would act 
in revenge was when any of the, of the, of the sanctities of God were violated. That the Prophet said, a personal attack, you know what? Let it go. May Allah guide my people. Allah, Allah, who might be told me for in whom they are the moon. Oh, Allah, guide my people because they don't know. Allahumma firli qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun Oh Allah forgive my people they don't know any better That was the response of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam What is a Muslim? What does it mean today? Are we just simply a race? Or just some culture? Or just like everybody else? Just among the list of all the oppressed groups of people that knew sort of Olympics, oppression Olympics, and we just simply uh, along with those people? No, a Muslim, a true Muslim, a true believer, one who follows the Messenger of Ali is an individual, a man of, of reason, a woman of reason, a, one, a person who does not simply take sides simply because, hey, they attacked me, I'm going to attack them. They said this about me, I'm going to say this about them. Hey, they stereotype me, they demonize our people, we're going to demonize their people. No. The Prophet ﷺ, he wasn't into that. That wasn't his way. That wasn't his way. But if you truly love Allah, as the Quran says, then follow the messenger. And I'll end with the Allah statement, subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he says, Ya amanu May you accept the min kumandini he for so for yet till law be pony you hip room or you hip buddha. Oh, you who believe, whoever of you turns away and turns his back on his deed, then Allah will replace you with the people who will love, who, 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 who he will love and they will love him. A dilatin ala mukini. They are courteous, they are gentle, they are kind to the believers. Believers. Why? Because what we share, most important, is Iman and Allah and His Messenger. That's the most important part of our identity, our Iman and Allah and His Messenger. Not to say that anything else is not important, but that is the most important. When there is a clash between your race and your deen, you pick your deen. It's between your gender, your gender and your deen, you choose your deen. If it's between your party affiliation and your dean, you choose your dean. If it's between anything else and your dean, you always choose your dean. Because that is the most important of all things. That is what the Prophet said came to bring us, is salvation in the hereafter. He didn't, he didn't come here to teach us how to be a successful, successful materialists. It wasn't about materialism. That wasn't his message, message of materialism. You take from it what you need for the akhirah. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu he did. Yujahidun of Allah. They struggle in the way of God. Allah, not the way of their nafs, not the way of their, their tribe. They struggle in the way of Allah. وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَ تَلَائِمْ And they do not fear the blame of those who blame. They have no fear. So those people who say, you're not down, you're not woken up. That you're just talking all that spiritual stuff. Say, no, who cares about what you say? I care about my Lord, what he says, to him, and I know my Lord. That he is pleased with this type of conversation because it is exactly, on, it is exactly what he has taught us. It is exactly what his messenger has taught us. Alayhi salatu So again, once, once again, the important question for us is what role shall the Muslim play in times of confusion? Will we contribute more to the polarization? Or will we be voices of reason? And risk, of course, losing friends. And if you lose a friend because you speak the truth, that person wasn't truly your friend to begin with. Right? But, but we have to be voices of reason. People are constantly trying to make peace. We're peacemakers. We're not people who place more fuel in the fire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to live up to this standard and to make us true emulators of the Messenger alayhi salatu salam. Aqulu kuli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa kum wa muslimin wa muslimat.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المسيد المسلمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والخصوق والحسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأنوات واغفرنا اللهم معهم بفضلك وإحسانك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على ملائكتك بالمقربين وعلى أنبيائك بالمرسلين وعلى أهل طاعتك أجمعين اللهم إنا نسألك من كل خير سأله منك محمد النبي ونعوذ بك من كل شر نستعاذك منه محمد النبي اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسررنا وما عادنا وما أنت أعلم به منا ربنا أجنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وصلي اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلاما على المسرين الحمد لله رب العالمين معكم الصلاة